Hello, and welcome to this week's After the Fact. You know, Hello. it's me, Pepsi, with Jake Cole. Yeah. And uh, I, I apologize to all of you who are waiting patiently for an entire week for something to come from our podcast. <laughs> all two of you were probably like... Just we have we have four fans. We get we get a minimum of six views per episode. Two of them are us. <laughs> so uh, we have we have at least four people who listen to us um, outside of us feeling obligated to to make sure it sounds good. I think one of them. I'm not naming names because I don't want to. I don't want to make anyone uh, uncomfortable about stuff. But I know, obviously, you know, several people close to us actively don't listen to the podcast. But they just play it. But one <laughs> one individual who I personally am a fan of, who does podcasting and uh, tweeting and, and the like, uh, did follow me on Twitter and follow the podcast. And I was like, oh. Oh, shit. I didn't uh, notice that. Yes, I'm, I'm happy about that. Out. Oh yeah, speaking of, we have a Twitter now, Fountain Media One, at Fountain Media One. Uh, go, go on. We we don't post because I'm the head of the Twitter apparently, and I'm not good at Twitter yet. So we'll we'll get better at that. Oh, did you hear that? Um, the this, robot, the robot parking meter. The robot thing. wish you a good day. It, it's no, it said have a safe drive. Oh, that's so sweet. Let me go. It's because it's because the robots need our bodies to survive. Yeah, that's they they try to automate labor and stuff, but what they don't know is the <laughs> robots desire tenderness just as we do, <laughs> and this neoliberal hellscape that forces us into heartless, cold relationships with no one. Oh, even the robots can't handle that. Okay, speaking of robots, this really has nothing to do with that, but I I just really want to talk about it because. It has been something that I have been obsessing over ever since it kind of started coming into the light. It was the fucking Sonic movie, man. Robotnik, you can make that connection. I mean, I guess, yeah. But I was just talking about... Well, I, I, was, I was thinking because Sonic is all CGI. is a CGI monstrosity. Yep. But I think they 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 did Sonic all right voice-wise. He's okay. I, you know, he fits. They could have done other voices that would have fit, you know, better or whatever, but whatever that's neither here nor there you take what you can get a robotnik isn't skinny he doesn't talk like that all you'd have to do is watch you know like five cut scenes from any of the video games to get like he's jim but, but, carrey but, but, he's whoa, fucking whoa, whoa, talented whoa whoa, whoa. <laughs> but what you're what you're missing <laughs> the, the important thing you're missing here is he called the guy basic i know what that means because that's a modern and funny thing it's very, very uh, a timeless joke that I'm sure will age very well in the next three months. Jim Carrey's Eggman in just fucking the Grinch with a mustache. No, he, he, the Grinch he, was a he good has character. A, he has a lot of no, but I'm saying he has a lot of the Grinch characteristics in the sense of like how he like the cadences and stuff and. Maybe that's just Jim Carrey, I don't know. That's just I think part of it's just Jim Carrey, but the it, it's not the Grinch in that like his his like the 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 joke which was in my opinion very not Jim Carrey was him explaining and I guess maybe this is me as an English major but hearing someone write a long fancy sentence where it clearly like isn't that but he's saying it really fast and they yeah. used a couple of bit cuz I'm listening to the sentence and I'm like all of that. Well, all that made sense. It was just, you know, he said it in a way that made it sound like he was saying smart people things. Yep. And then the other guy's like, what he's saying is you're basic. And it's just like, this joke works if, like, the idea of, like, oh, he said it in a way that was confusing and too smart. If you write it that way, and I love dumb people writing smart people. It's it's just the best movie failure. Yeah. And yeah, to, to, no, I'm not going to take us off topic for longer than one sentence, but one of the best examples of it is Mega Shark versus Giant Octopus. The scientists in that movie, you will... I If you haven't seen that movie, <laughs> please. What, that's, Sonic? That's going to be one for the uh, watch, uh, watch, watch yeah. and whatever. But... 
so so the move the, the initial trailer itself like when it first came out i'm like that's kind of stupid they don't really need it like you know video games in themselves are movies i don't you don't really need to make a sonic movie it's not gonna do that well i don't think but what pisses me off is that they put the trailer out and people were pissing and moaning about the sonic thing so then the guy was like oh we'll just change it and it's like there's no doubt in my mind that there was at least a handful of people who had direct contact with the director and could say, Hey, this Sonic looks fucking stupid. We should change it. And the director was like, nah. And then a fucking bunch of goddamn basement dwellers complain about it on Facebook or whatever. Mm. And like, I complained about it too, but I was just making a joke. I don't give a shit. They're going to, they should make the movie how they wanted to make the movie initially. They shouldn't like pander to fucking people this late in the game. Because the thing is, they're not, they're they're not hurting anybody but the animators. They're only hurting the people who have to take care of the CGI. Because you know, it's going to be like in video games with the, the fucking crunch. There is no doubt in my mind that someone is going to get paid way too little for way too many hours remaking this entire movie in the next movie. Yeah, because they got to go frame for frame. Like, maybe the shots from behind, they don't have to switch or whatever. I don't know, but it's like, yeah, they're going to they're gonna have to go frame for frame and change all this shit. Fuck off with that, because the issue isn't that he's ugly. Is, is he fine? Yeah, he's ugly. But, like, I mean, well, so no matter what they do, he's going to be ugly. He's going to be a CGI monstrosity in the world of humans. And fucking Pikachu looked ugly. I love Pikachu. If the Sonic was beautiful (laughs) and the best thing you'd ever seen, everything else about the trailer is dog shit. Yes. And that's true. It doesn't matter. Let the movie be dog shit because that's where you're going to get your money is people like me who are like, (laughs) it looks like dog shit. I'm going to go see it. Yeah. That's... Yeah. No. I the, the second I saw it, I was like, "This looks terrible." I really want to see this movie. Yeah. I, like, I, and the thing is, it's coming out in the same month as what will be my birthday and also one year of sobriety. So I'm very happy that it's going to be <laughs> that's going to be like my reward. Yeah. <laughs> for, <laughs> for making it a year is <laughs> is watching the this only thing worse for your song, mind maybe. and body than alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shitty fucking movies. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, no. It's... I'd rather if they just used Mr. Electric from Shark Boy and Lava Girl to be Sonic. <laughs> they really just made Shark Boy and Lava Girl. <laughs> if they re- remade that with Taylor Lautner again. And... Yeah. So it looks pretty pretty good. I don't know. I mean, it it, it looks okay. It's not. I did. It's... I... What about it it's looks not, okay? It's not... I, I, I mean, because it's fucking Sonic, dude. I'm not going to lie. I, I love that shit. I, all the 3D games are garbage, but I've played them. One of my, like, favorite games of all time is Sonic 06, which is, like, up there with Sonic Boom along, like, the worst Sonic game of all time. Because mm-hmm. it, it was just glitchy as fuck. There was, there was no consistency. All the characters were just it was it was a bad game it was very poorly made they didn't put a lot of work into it yes. all the humanoid characters were exactly the same they didn't even have like two different character models right right you know like it was or the, the, they did they had a black guy who worked at the stores who would wave his arms around wildly while mm-hmm. he told you about what they had and then the rest were just white people or children i hope black guy at store is in the movie <laughs> it's the best character I, um, what I don't understand is, and like, you've seen it now with Wreck-It Ralph, so they can do it. Why, in God's name, do they always feel the need to make a live action, let's remove the plot of the video games and instead make it like, how do we force this into the real world? And they, like, why is, why? And like, Super Mario Brothers the movie, amazingly Uh, That's a beautiful example of that. I love it. And it's like the Super Mario games have a lot of plot and stuff, and you can kind of just make a movie about it like that. You could make a movie where it's like, oh, it's a me, Mario. Well, and they- it goes and he's trying. It's like the, just a 3D. They couldn't have done it then with the best, you know, whatever. But today, you could make a perfect 3D Mario movie with the exact same, just that looks like Mario, instead of trying to be like, how's the live action Mario? And it's, I am going to go see the live action uh, Lion King. 
But it's the same issue of like, hey, well, well, the joy so, and fun of this cartoonish animation. Let's get rid of that. So, like, what would it look like if it wasn't? The, like, okay, animation the, is good. The thing about the real version of um, Lion King that I'm not too upset about is because animals are real. You can yeah. have a real animal. Sonic isn't real. It's a hedgehog. Make it shape. all 3D. It's he, a hedgehog. He's a, fucking, he's a blue hedgehog that runs really fast and then also... Now let me stop you. Like, Would you not rides a motorcycle. be happy to see this movie if it was just an actual hedgehog? I would be, I would be more happy than having this CGI stupid thing and then human beings. I'd rather have it all be CGI or have like a fucking hedgehog that they spray painted blue or whatever several hedgehogs because they'll probably like, die in the process but do it like the like a uh the lion that like the jungle book jungle. make a really realistic but cgi hedgehog that's blue <laughs> i'm not kidding i would see that movie so fast <laughs> oh my god i i don't know man i just why why couldn't they just make it all CGI. Why couldn't they make it all 3D? Well, because and have like 3D models of humans. That that would make more sense. There, I do. There is such a feeling in Hollywood, and I guess in our culture, because they keep <sighs> selling tickets for it. Of like, it's not a real movie unless you can make it into a live action movie. Dude. And it's like, no, animation is a good thing. Animation is cool. It requires talent. Animated movies are good. And, like, we need to be okay with that. And I'm going to see the new Lion King because it's got a cool cast. And because Lion King was the movie that I cared about a lot when I was a little kid. No. Fine. And I like animals. And I want to see the animals. And I'm willing to say that I am a big, dumb, dipshit idiot. And I'm excited to see that. But And the exact do, stuff that they were hoping for is true. Yeah. I do, however, have to say... It is kind of shitty, especially for, like, Disney, this company that was built around this, like, oh, the joy, like, the beauty of animation, to, like, be like, hey, wouldn't it be better if it didn't have, you know, animation? It's like, no, yeah. anim cartoons are good. They're good. Yeah, Fuck no, off. I, I, like, I remember when everybody was complaining because all movies coming out were in 3D, like, you had to wear the 3D glasses oh, or whatever. God. Like, that was the thing. And now all movies are becoming... A, real people and cgi things blending together for some reason like that's all movies are now and it's like can you not write an original movie like that has to do with you know either all human beings or all cartoons like i don't i don't understand the the point of i am very confused about who has access to this gas pump right now because uh, it looks like no one but i can't tell who's I don't, doing what it looks like I want to get in line, but, like, this person's clearly trying to come here. Like, you come here, and there's someone behind you. I don't know if they're waiting for this gas pump. Are you leaving, or are you getting gas? Getting yeah, gas. you're getting gas. Good. Uh, well, well, I'm going to wait. Uh, here. Fuck. Fucking. Fuck the system. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. <clears throat> but, yeah, so, I don't know. I'm just, yeah, I'm just, gonna... no, I just okay, don't good. understand... No, no, planning it. Uh, you, you made it. Okay? Yeah, that was, that was not a, the best decision. What? Money. The one that he made. Literally there, nothing I can there, do for There's you. so many exits. Nope, Why did he turn to go into this one? It's, it's not going to happen. No, no, no. Oh, my. <sighs> now he's reversing. Oh. Okay. There so, so, so we go. Um, I'm, I'm, still, just, I'm just waiting I'm not for I'm thrilled about how close is, my car is. is. Who are you honking at? Who's going to help you? No one can help you. You we, made this what? We, we can't move, man. I don't know yeah. what you're honking at us for. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Can you not do it still? No, he's got space now. 
Jesus Christ. That was a lot of silence. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. The woman is a lot nicer than anyone needs to be. Yeah, that's, that's actually very surprising given the area we're in. Most people are assholes. Yeah. Um, well, people come here from outside of our hometown. I'm not naming it. Yeah, so. True. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, this is actually one of the cheaper gas stations. Exactly. Yeah. But, yeah, you know. Um, it's, it is, and you know, the, the whole 3D, um, craze, I think the shining example is the unending mediocrity of Avatar and how that's like the highest grossing movie of all time. It's like, and now it's going to get undone by the, the, the big Marvel movie. And I'm really indifferent about that entire thing. But, uh, like, it's just so funny to me. That a movie, and I'm not the first person to say this, but a movie that culturally insignificant had no, like, lasting impact on anyone. Not only was it, like, the highest grossing film of all time, it still is for the time being. Mm -hmm. I mean, frankly, by the time that we released this, it might not be anymore. But, <laughs> like, that is one thing. But it set off a craze of, like, a new wave of 3D movies, and none of them were good. And I, maybe I'm crazy... Everyone disagreed with me at the time, but my big takeaway at the time of Avatar was the 3D was mediocre and uninteresting, and the special effects were boring and bad. And everyone's like, no, you're crazy. It's like, no. Everyone's saying like they look so real, and it's like you're in the world. And I'm just sitting there like, it looks like a video game, and a very good video game. Yeah, I... but None of it looks real, and none of it looks like artistically good. Because it wasn't, it wasn't made by artists. It was made by scientists to be like, well, if, if this was a real planet, it would be, it would look like this. It's like I don't care. Yeah. I want to see something g good, you know. <laughs> like it's a movie. I'm not yeah. here to see like hypothetically what is a rendering of the most boring other planet you could have. Yeah, no. It, like I remember liking it as you know when it came out, which was what when we were in high school. Um, it was 2007, 2008. Oh, geez, we were in middle school. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was the end of middle school. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that it, and it's like I remember liking it as a kid, but it's like I don't. There's nothing really memorable about it other than like the the like the about the plot. Like I, I mean, the unobtainium, obviously, because that's the stupidest fucking name for anything. Oh my god, I forgot. But that's what it's really hard to it. obtain. I forgot they called it unobtainium. <laughs> I remembered that they called the the world Pandora, which was on the nose. And I remember the plot <laughs> is like a mix of what's wrong with what we do in the Middle East and what's wrong with what we did to the Native Americans as one movie. It's like, oh, they're Native American aliens who have oil that we want. And it's just like, okay, are you backing out? Are you pulling? I, she might try to pull around us, but I'm trying to make sure that that car, yeah, that black not, car there is not getting in worry. here. They're not going to. There you go. Yeah, they're not going to drive. Oh. All right. All right. That's the price we pay to get cheap gas is you got to wait 15 wait minutes. Actually, yeah. we park. Okay, okay, and we're back. Good, we're back. So you, you, we didn't go anywhere. It was literally split second. But that was uh, uh, a while. I was pumping gas, and it was like the slowest gas pump I've probably not nah, maybe not the slowest I've ever used, but it was pretty slow. Oh yeah, I've I've gotten them pretty slow before, and it's like I think it's just like when the like the reservoir is running low because there's a lot of people pumping gas there. Yeah. So that that, just play, that place that, runs out pretty often. I I was very happy that no one else got into line behind me because I was very worried that the person waiting in front of our car was like was going to get cut off. Yeah, in some way because yeah. it took so long, and I don't know, like they must have probably been getting a little anxious or impatient. Yeah. But no, the whole thing was a bit silly. But we yeah, I don't gas. even think the person. Uh, oh, what's that? Oh, it was a car accident. Uh, uh, you can go right ahead. There, there's oh, oh there's a block party. No, that is a car accident. <laughs> it is a so big car a block accident. party. It's a cop party. Oh boy, the worst kind. <laughs> the worst kind of party. You know, the real worst kind of party <laughs> is a political party, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got him. All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, anyway, sorry about the lack of, I mean, I guess if you are here at this point, you don't care about professionalism or, uh, yeah, anything. so, so cause there's no consistency with this or where we're we, going with it. You know what? Um, <laughs> do I go to chase now or like, I'll go to chase. 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 Um, but, uh, 
yeah, no, like, uh, the entire wave of 3D movies, and, like, it, it was such an artistic uh, shit show, because mm -hmm. you go back to any of those movies now, and you can, like, pick out, like, oh, yep, this was the part where they would have been, like, whoa, because they just yep. ham-fisted um, it into a non-3D movie. What do you, like, one of, my mov one of the movies that I really like is... Uh, Megamind. It's it's not the best movie. I like plenty of terrible movies. So Megamind's good, but it, it, it's 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 yeah, it, it it's all right. Considering it's a three D movie, there's a lot of way better ones. It's no that... open season three, <laughs> yeah. but it's okay. Um, but so anyway, in that there's there's a scene where every time I'm like, this is this is where they mm -hmm. this, this is the one scene where they included the three D bit, and it was like where he threw a building at him, and the tip of the building is like coming out of the screen. And it's supposed yeah. to feel like it's coming at your eye or whatever. And yeah, there's so many movies from that. And it's like, window. but yeah, and it's like if they did more of that stuff in the movie or at the very beginning of uh, I think it's Monsters versus Aliens. That guy's doing the 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 paddle ball, the oh, thing with yeah. the string on the ball. Yeah, he's doing that into the camera. And then other than that, it's really like, wow, where does the three D play in? The, the, yet, the three D aspect of it had nothing to do every, with every like when that was a new thing. There were lots of things that were happening in the movie to make the three D part like pop out and like be more interesting. Yeah, that's the issue. Is when we were like kids, kids, and 3D movies happened in the 90s, the whole point was like, this is a movie that was made to be a 3D movie. It's supposed to so be an it's experience. It's supposed to be yeah. like, oh, here's a thing flying. The whole movie was made with that in mind, and it's just a bunch of like, oh, wouldn't that be well, yeah. spooky? Yeah, and then Whereas a lot of newer stuff, it's just an afterthought. They were all just regular-ass movies yeah. with one scene of a thing going towards the screen, and yeah. it's it's embarrassing. It's bad. Mm -hmm. uh, was it Suicide Squad or The Mummy where they tried doing that thing where the, the, the movie would, like, leave the borders of the movie? Because it was, like, made to... It was, like... I'm forgetting what it's called, but, like, the if you're watching a movie in widescreen, the bar is at the bottom. Like, oh, yeah. The movie would jump out and, like, kind of break break the barrier, and it that looked comically bad, but at least that plays out the exact same way at home unlike any 3D movie that does that shit. Yeah, yeah. And the whole point of Avatar, and I don't I don't agree that it was good, but the reason it was, like, worth noting was it didn't have stuff flying at you. Yeah. It was supposed to be, like... It was just supposed to be... An, an atmosphere of stuff around you floating. Like, it's it, it, it broke the, the plane of the, whatever, the fourth wall, if you... Yeah, could, yeah, like, so you movie. could, yeah. So you I could thought it was... See the depth. It, it, yeah. It, it definitely looked cool, I see. Maybe I just went to a bad theater, but I just felt like it. Like this I, would be better if I wasn't wearing 3D glasses because this it just slightly blurry. Well, it, but... That and it's like I I remember crying during the movie because my eyes hurt. Oh wow! <laughs> from, from watching the 3D, like that's all yeah. it was. Like I don't like the movie wasn't emotional. Fucking, I don't give a shit about what uh, yeah. what's her name. The who is the main actress in that? She's uh, Zoe Saldana, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't give a shit whether or not she's dying. I could. I could give two fucks, but they, my she eyes just hurt. Yeah. At the, well, I, no. Well, How she do was. You remember the plot of this movie? At the, at the very end. Of, well, I don't remember like the details of the plot. I just remember the very end. The whole thing is he's in his avatar form and he takes her to the tree to permanently move her into her avatar form so she won't die. Like, oh that's the whole no thing. no that was that wasn't the the woman that was Sigourney Weaver Sigourney right? Weaver that's who that is okay yeah, Zoe Saldana was the Avatar woman yeah yeah no she was... actually was an alien whereas like he was only pretending which wasn't really treated as a plot point because the movie wasn't supposed to really have a plot and you could feel it yeah and yet yeah, but point being. I can respect the concept of, like, let's try and find a new way to use visuals in film outside of the norm. Mm -hmm. They didn't do a good job, and I think 3D was a dumb idea, and I think the movie is in and of itself still terrible, mm -hmm. so it's not worth caring. And it does kind of just, like, I'm good with... Here's what fucking pisses me off. Mm -hmm. I want a guy like David Lynch to be given the budget of billions of dollars to use CGI and weird visual effects to create dreamscapes unimaginable in modern... Oh. 
but they won't do that. So instead, the CGI goes to how do we make something look absolutely perfectly real and normal mm. without actually using it? It's like, I don't care. If I wanted to see a building, I would look at a fucking building. Yeah, and it's just like, <sighs> like I don't know, man. Oh. It's, 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 in, Blow up and, the it's, car. and it's stupid consumerism. Like, like Michael Bay movies, I'm okay with those because it just seems like Michael Bay likes to make shit explode, and that's what he likes to do. I like to watch people make movies that they give a shit about. They fucking, like, the people who made Avatar, it felt like they made this movie so that they could, like, get a bunch of money. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe they... I would go ahead and disagree. Maybe the they were... Front, he is a heartless villain in my mind, but it's... No. I, there are definitely dudes who, like, really, they want to do that. And you know what? You saw that with fucking canon movies. They were absolutely dudes who were just like, you know what? I want to blow up a fucking car. Wouldn't that be so cool? Yeah, like, and then he's got a gun and he goes in. There's like a bunch of dudes and like yeah, ninjas and he's yeah, shooting. Fucking any of the expendables. They're right? bad as shit. They're awful. They're awful movies. But it's like you know someone was in that room going, like, "Dude, that's so badass." And that's fun. And then, that's fine. Do yeah. that. Like, get, get rid of the CGI. Fucking blow up a shitty busted down car like they used to do. Yeah. You know, and maybe yeah, it's bad no, for the environment or whatever, but so is all the, the fucking <laughs> useless labor of six billion fucking people working for Marvel to make whatever. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, That's what I want to see in a movie, is a fucking car blow up, and for me to be like, that is that is what a real fucking blown up car looks like. <laughs> because your brain can tell the difference. Yeah. Case in point, Max, uh, Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, uh, yeah? Those I never saw fucking, that one. Oh, what? No. Nah. Oh, I, had, I didn't bother, dude. Oh, uh, we're gonna watch that. Like terrible. <laughs> Are you kidding? Have you heard anything about that movie? Was it good? That's considered one of the best action movies of all time. Really? It, people were fighting for it to get best picture that year. It's really? all practical effects, Is and it it's all actually practical? amazing. Oh, okay. And, and you know what? The most important thing that stands out about that fucking movie is, is that it had a visionary director who had wanted to make something that looked interesting and cool and weird so the characters like have personality and the bad guys like they they there's a clear visually like it has its own kind of visual like the weird deformed dude with his weird foot and stuff just small stuff where you can okay. tell this director was like trying to build a world and make his movie look like it rather than every other movie because you look every movie looks the same you look at the scenes in the new marvel movie where they're not fighting and stuff and compare that to the post by steven spielberg couldn't be any different movie they look the same because yeah. every movie looks the same Oh yeah, I think I think it's just because I don't um, action movies in general. I don't they don't appeal to me super a lot. I don't know. I know because I always like watching comedy stuff when I was a kid. I was never like the kid who wanted to go see the you know blow them up, shoot them up movies. Like, Same I like as, watching a, as a little kid. Funny things and even well and just now it's just I don't you know. There's there's too many options. It's hard to pick. I'd rather I'd rather watch something I watched a thousand times than fucking burn through now, Netflix that, for two hours and try to figure something else. I feel the same new way. Watch like like I've been trying to watch more sci-fi stuff recently and like Big horror kind guy. of stuff. Like that, and horror, horror is probably my favorite kind of movie at this point. Yeah, um, you know and they're actually uh, like you know or at least some of the ones that I've been you know coming into have been pretty interesting but um yeah so that so that's mostly why i guess i never heard anything specific about it because i guess a lot of people that i've like watched or whatever liked mad max but it's worth i think you should check it yeah. out we're gonna pause again and you're again just gonna have like us in about one second saying hey we're not paused anymore but for us this is gonna be a little bit all right, all right as stated um we're back and you know we didn't go anywhere to you but um, I'm going to move to a new topic, I guess, because I have no idea what you're talking about. It was well, about movies. Well, we can do more movie stuff. This can be a movie after the fact that doesn't have to do with Space Jam, although now it does because I said that. But everyone talks about how they want to fuck Lola Bunny. Nobody talks about okay. Wayne Knight when he was all inflated. <laughs> oh, um, Newman? Yeah, Newman. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's right. That was the whole thing. I forgot about that. I wonder how many people got into that fetish because of spaceship. <laughs> got to inflation mm -hmm. because of Newman? I don't think very many. <laughs> well, I can tell you at least one. But, um... 
But, uh, no, for real, though, I wish we could bring Walt Disney back just so I could take him to a furry convention and be like, you caused this. Yep. You did yep. this. And he was probably the first furry. I would say he may have been, but even if he was, he was, you know how he was like. He was like a fucking Nazi and everything. He absolutely would be disgusted at these people. True. And he deserves it. Yeah. He deserves to feel great shame. And, and if it's got to uh, be for furries, fine. Because yeah. you're not going to well, do it for the anti-Semitism thing. And even, well, yeah, actually, he even also made foot fetishes popular because of uh, Cinderella. I guess that wasn't him. Was it him, Cinderella? Well, he made he made the movie. He was alive for that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And now But one. I'm saying, like, but in the animated movie, like, yeah, it's just like her feet are perfect as they put on the thing. Like, that. that's, uh, there's a lot of probably document not documentation, but if you ask enough people do have a foot fetish around our age, they'll probably say, oh, yeah, it was from Cinderella. You might be projecting on this one. <clears throat> I actually don't. I've never been into feet. It's, yeah, not that I'm like, it's not like I'm grossed out by them. It's just that I don't, I don't care about them one way or the I'm other. I'm not grossed out by them, but like, if you asked me to name the least sexy part of the body, <laughs> it would be one of the things that would come to mind, probably. And then the other thing would be the other foot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man. Uh -oh. Elbows. That's what I get off to. Uh -oh. oh man. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. So after Lion King, what do you think is going to be the new, uh, like, you shitty brought into the real world Disney movie? So first, I'm going to answer a question you didn't ask, which is, what should it be? What should it be? <laughs> it should be Black Cauldron. They should be going to movies that no one really remembers that kind of sucked from the era of bad Disney movies that could be made into really good movies. But they're not going to do that. The next one they're probably going to do, they already did, let me remember, they did Cinderella, uh, uh, Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Um, they're not going to do Sleeping Beauty because they did Maleficent, which is like, they're, that's what they did. They're not going to make a different one. Um, so that counts as one. Jungle Book and Lion King. What I was, were we talking about this? I think they should make Robin Hood, but like with a just a fox that looks like a regular fox. <laughs> no, I was saying that <laughs> they're not going to do that either. But that would be a funny thing to do. Um, I just wish more people had our. Oh, they're doing Dumbo. Yeah, right. <laughs> if they're more people Dumbo. were just okay with just insanity. Oh yeah, it might be Dumbo. No, they did Dumbo. Oh, they did do Dumbo. You didn't hear about that? It's out. No, no, okay. That it just happened. Tim Burton. I don't even no, remember. Alice in Wonderland. I don't even remember the original. I don't, I don't think I ever saw it. Like I may have seen it once. I don't know. There's the whole thing with the dancing elephants, right? That's a mm -hmm. big thing with the. Yeah. Yeah. And then they made fun of that scene and. Uh... Tony Hawk. Did they? You did... oh, that's Tony where you Hawk. were going. There's no. a level in Tony Hawk Underground too, I think. <laughs> were they? Were they? Think. Oh, okay. No, I was gonna say um, that this is not in Madagascar. There we go. I was gonna say Alex the Lion. That's not the name of the movie. <laughs> oh, Madagascar. They do that when he gets knocked out. There's like a whole thing. It kind of looks like the dancing. Elements. That was a great sequence with like the the clock on the giraffe's head comes in. Yeah. Like yeah. it was funny. Um, what would be the next movie? Mm -hmm. I'm sure somebody uh, listening, if there's anyone listening, would probably... Monsters, Inc. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> they would probably know, because I'm sure they've announced. So maybe we're just dumb and don't want to look it up. But... Well, yeah, that's the thing. I don't, watch, I don't watch things that have commercials anymore. I pay no, for same. YouTube. I pay good money for Hulu. I have Netflix. I don't... I have no reason to see commercials if i ever do see a trailer it's because i looked it up yeah and it's like it's something that i wanted to see where it happened on my whatever you know mm -hmm. facebook or some shit what would the next thing be i don't know yeah i would want a hyper realistic fox that would really be a good but, one but like so so hyper realistic three so hyper realistic cgi that it looks 
grotesquely fake, like the Uncanny Valley mm -hmm. stuff. That's what I like. But I would like a lot more of that. Because, um... <clears throat> Incredible Journey. So that was, um... If you've ever seen Homeward Bound, mm -hmm. that was based on Incredible Journey, which is effectively the same movie, but they're real animals and they don't talk. Ah. Uh -huh. It was like the 70s or whatever when that kind of thing would interest a kid back before the 90s happened and we needed constant excess in talking animals. Do that with Robin Hood. Regular animals, not wearing any outfits or anything, and they don't talk. Two hours of that. That's your movie. <laughs> just... just <laughs> <laughs> um, but realistically, what would the next one be? What is a big Disney movie that hasn't already been done? Ooh, why don't you do a reverse full air bun? So mm. it's all dogs and then one human. Mm -hmm. He was really good at like catching frisbees with his mouth or something. <laughs> <laughs> the one human at the dog park who keeps grabbing the frisbees before the dogs can get to it. <laughs> Oh. Ain't no rule says a man can't play frisbee. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and like the whole the whole plot of the movie is that this man wants to be a part of the dog show, like the Westminster dude, dog show. Yeah, or and like his friends are all like, "Dude, just come play ultimate frisbee with us." Like, no, <laughs> this isn't about the frisbee, guys. It's about the person. Oh. What else? Mm, um, I mean, they do a Little Mermaid. Oh, that's probably going to be the next. That's got to be. Actually. They haven't done that yet. Yeah. Because yeah, so so what you're saying that they should do is take the bad ones and make them better or whatever. Make remake movies from the Disney canon that do not have a big following today. Yeah. But the like thing the is, they're, they're trying to bank on the IP because the, they're doing the exact opposite. Yeah, they're the like, popularity. we're just gonna make the same movie that already exists because people like it. And they're like, oh, but now I get to see it for real. It's yeah. Like, no, the joy well, of Disney I mean, movies was that they were animated. Yeah. But the thing is, works because you said you're gonna go see the movie. No, absolutely. So, I guess they know what they're doing, but integrity, I guess, should be looked into. It's like true to Walt integrity. It's true to Walt Disney's legacy, because he was absolutely a businessman first and an animator second. Yeah. Uh, well, he was a Nazi for. Well, I guess it was second. Yeah, he was a businessman first, which connected to his Nazism, and then like animation on the side. What they should do is hyper realistic CGI. Just like uh, Mickey Mouse and shit. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. Oh, like I've seen pictures of that kind of stuff. Like hyper realistic Disney characters. It's horrifying. Um, uh, it should make a Ronald McDonald movie. Is he even, mm. Does he even have anything to do with McDonald's anymore? Do they not? Like, loosely, but I don't think they can use them in marketing. So, like, it's just like they still have Ronald McDonald in the house. Okay. But they don't, like, they can't do commercials with Ronald or whatever, do, like, promotional stuff with Ronald. Oh, uh, okay. But they brought back the burglar, hamburglar a while. Did they? Yeah. Try to make him hot. <laughs> That's not a joke. Rubble, rubble, rubble. Rubble, rubble. <laughs> is that really a thing? I don't remember how he sounded. I hope it but was like that. <laughs> it was like, like a very seductive rubble. <laughs> they like... That lasted about 30 minutes. But it was a, it was a good little moment. Oh, man. Late stage capitalism, man. Deformed Sonics and sexy-ass hamburgers. <laughs> the Sonic didn't look that bad. Like, considering it was brought into the real world, they made it look m more human, I guess. Like, so they gave him smaller eyes that wasn't just one big eye connected in the middle. Because that's the thing. If you, if you see all the, like, games or whatever, his eyes are just one big eye with maybe a line in the middle, sometimes not even that. Sometimes yeah. it's just one solid white eye. They shouldn't have done that with a real, like, just have a head, one eye to hedgehog, but like a right real hedgehog. <laughs> Be horrifying. 
<laughs> Cyclops Hedgehog. Oh god. Just do like Air Bud, but with a hedgehog. And the dog catcher type guy is Robotnik, played by Jim Carrey. And it's like, ain't no rule that says a hedgehog can't run track and field. <laughs> or cross country. <laughs> and then, like, he just gets stepped on and dies. Because oh, hedgehogs are about, like, six inches tall. They're pretty small. Um, but I don't know, man. Like, don't even, like... Not even a blue hedgehog, but in like the last part of the movie, like he falls into some dye or something. Like at the bit, like, and it's the sequel hook is like he comes out and he's got blue on him. It's like, oh, that's a pretty good look, Sonic. Oh my god, <laughs> uh, that sounds like how they would make a Hulk movie now. They would, uh, they would just build up to him becoming the Hulk, and then at the end of the movie, it just cuts. I'm like, all right, come see the second one in six months. See, it wouldn't be because, you know, they have to front load every single thing. And it's just like we all give them what they want. Got to get them, them money. I hate that. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't really believe in whatever, like, selling out. Like, you have to make money, do what you need to do to make money. But at the same time. No, see, that's okay. When, when it's you a, already have a bunch of money. That, yeah. Do something you like. <laughs> you know, if people don't like it, give them a shit. The proletariat has to sell out to survive. These guys have billions of dollars and stand to lose nothing. They just want more money. Yeah. That's why I liked, um... You probably, you probably weren't as big of a fan, but I like the Deadpool movies. Because... Especially after watching the behind-the-scenes stuff, because it just looked like Ryan Reynolds was trying to do something he wanted to do. It didn't oh, yeah. seem like he was trying to oh, answer to anybody. It was like a dream of his. Yeah, and it came through, and that's always nice. Yeah, so it's like it was. And, and the second movie, I think, wasn't you know very well received or whatever. But it's like you know, you watch it, and it it, it it's. At the very least, you can tell everybody in there gives a shit about being in the movie. Like, he got mm -hmm. good people. Everybody, you know, if you watch behind-the-scenes stuff, you can see them talking about, you know, how fun it was to work with him, how, you know, like, into everything he was. He tried to keep everything a secret because he didn't want anybody to know, you know, exactly who the villain was and stuff like that. Absolutely. And so it's like, that's, that's what happens when you have a director with a... Vision, and then they put out that vision because they want to, not because it's they green, need to do you know? money. Yeah, I was talking with my brother the other day. We watch um, Ghost Adventures. You ever watch it? No. Comically stupid show. Yeah. Beautifully just bizarre and stupid and crazy, and I love it. But the thing is, every single sh a show, not just the fact that they're hunting ghosts, but the way the show's made, the little shots, the little CGI things they do, the spe not CGI, but little special effects stuff. Yeah. Like the the outdoor shot of like they put a drone on, and it's all like professional enough, but amateur enough that you can like kind of see the strings, mm -hmm. and be like, oh, you came up with this trick, whatever. Yeah. But the thing is, and I was telling them, what I love about the show, it's so endearing, is that every single step of the way, you can just tell like someone was very proud of this. Yeah. It's not good, <laughs> and they were very proud of it. Mm -hmm. And they use it every, like over and over again. Mm -hmm. One of the things like uh, to show like a ghost, a spooky demon thing, yeah. they'll have like a shot of someone's head going all crazy. Mm -hmm. And if you have any understanding of how to make anything, you know that they just shot a guy standing still moving his head around and yeah. then sped it up real quick. It's like, oh, doesn't that look weird? They do it yeah. every episode because <laughs> someone is very proud that they came up with the idea. <laughs> and it's nice. You just watch it and you're like, this is... Some they really all uh, care about what they're doing, uh, love what they're doing, and who cares if it's good? Yeah, see, and that's the thing that like when even when it was first announced before any like concept art or whatever, before like the things that people were complaining about came out, the the thing that I wasn't excited for in the Sonic movie was that a lot of the Sonic games, at least recently. It looks like whoever is producing them doesn't care. Mm -hmm. They they want it like I mean, Sonic Boom is a great example of that. It, it it like I think they worked on that game for maybe like two years, which is not very long, and they like sent it out early. But like when they sent it out, they or no, they didn't send out review copies. That's what it was because they needed to get it out by Christmas. 
but they didn't want anybody to review it and let them know it was bad. So it's just like they sent out this thing that they knew was terrible and they knew that it was going to make money just because it was Sonic. And it's like, that's how the video games have been. I can only imagine how little of the shit whoever the director of the movie is going to care, you know? No, exactly. Like, like it's not going to be some 24-year-old who's, you know, grew up playing the Sega or whatever from his, you know, big brother or something like that. Like, it's it's going to be an adult who's like, oh, kids like Sonic, let's make a movie about Sonic. Mm -hmm. Like, that's all it is. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's 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 been a while since I've seen a movie that looked like in another one that looked like it there was a lot of care and effort put into it was Sp uh, spider-man into the spider-verse mm -hmm. i haven't seen it oh, you, you have to see i it. really need to see it yeah um but uh but yeah like you could you could tell like that was just something that someone cared about and then you go back and watch andrew garfield spider-man movies and it's like these seem like four Spider-Man movies just because they like the first three Spider-Man did really well with yep. Tobey Maguire. Exactly. <laughs> and it's like, you know, I, I have my complaints about the Marvel Cinematic Universe mm -hmm. and this production of like a neoliberal product. Yeah. Of just like constantly churning out the exact same movie. Mm -hmm. But like when it when there's an exception, when you have something like Black Panther or like Thor Ragnarok and you can tell this is a director who had a vision who wanted to make a movie, it feels like it doesn't belong. Mm -hmm. And that it's beautiful. And the thing you can say positive about them is, you know, I'm not some immune, you know, heartless, whatever. Like, I, they're fun. You know, I don't hinge my entire life on them like some people do, but mm -hmm. I like them. They're fine. I've seen, like, probably 10 of them at most. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, they're whatever. But the actors, for the, a lot of them, it really matters to them. Like, they care. They go and they do this stuff with the fans. Like, they, like Robert Downey Jr., not a great guy, but he is like, there are millions of children who think of me as, you know, a hero. And he goes and he makes them feel like they got to meet him. And it's like, you know, that's nice. These are people who give a shit. Yeah. And, you know, the people making the movies, not particularly. The producers, the guys at Disney, like, they don't care. Well, but, like, a lot of the guys involved are, like, really big comic book fans and shit. Well, the, yeah, yeah. So, like, the actors and stuff, yeah, they're, they're, they were big And, like, the Russo fans. brothers, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, like, it no, comes, I mean, and that's, that's the difference. You look at that versus DC where you have, like, uh, Zack Snyder who seems to actively hate any of the comics and the people who like them. <laughs> and it's like, all right. Well, <laughs> and, I mean, I, <laughs> I kind of admire that because DC Universe is stupid. It's really dumb. Yeah, it's, it's my so issue dumb. is with Warner Brothers. We're having a guy who made a movie that fans hated because it was so disrespectful to its source material, and they said that guy should make all of our movies. <laughs> and it's like, all right, <laughs> go ahead, I guess. <laughs> Which one was the first uh, Watchmen? Zack Snyder? What's that? Watchmen. Yeah, that was that was Zack Snyder. Oh my god, that movie was so long. It and was I mean, not very, and my was my like, views on him, like my favorite movie of all time, is the original Dawn of the Dead. And he remade it, mm -hmm. and a lot of people only know that version, which is, in my opinion, completely disrespectful to the original. Because the original, excuse me, the original is it's a horror movie, but it was mostly like a political satire and social commentary, because that's what George Romero liked to do. And it was about, you know, zombies, and he had some scary stuff and gore, because he was more interested in coming up with cool-looking special effects, mm -hmm. which we don't have anymore, because you can just bring it up on a fucking MacBook. Yeah. But back then, it was yeah. like, oh, they went to a local butcher shop. It was all local. He was so invested in every single frame of that movie. Mm -hmm. You have Zack Snyder makes, like, I want make, I want them, the zombies are going to run real fast, because it looks spooky. Um, wouldn't it be so cool and weird if, like, they had a, uh, like, the, the, the little girl turns into a zombie or whatever, and it's just like, Okay, and it just felt like we have this idea from the original. They're in a shopping mall. It's like, that's so cool and scary or whatever. Fuck it. Yeah, I have, like, zombies and shit. And they get, like, a big car and they get, like, a tank or whatever. And it's just like, <laughs> there was a heart to this movie. But in addition, if you're going to completely ignore the heart and make a mass-produced product the way that movies have to be now, at least have the same point. The point of Dawn of the Dead was we have become you know, just completely owned by this capitalist system. It was made about, you use shopping malls as this metaphor for American society and us as zombies back before that was like 
middle school cliche bullshit. Shopping malls were new and zombies were new. Yeah. And it, the, <laughs> one of the first movies that set this into the, the pop culture mainstream made that point. It's like, yeah, we're all kind of just like, we like buying stuff and we're just like, are we really alive? And on top of that, the fear of zombies from like the, the old Hollywood perspective, then you look at like, why do we have Godzilla? It's an embodiment of nuclear war. Mm-hmm. Why do we have aliens? It's an embodiment of xenophobia. Yeah. Uh, why do we, it, and zombies serve as this fear of death and it's slow and it's inevitable. Zack Snyder's like, what if they ran really fast? <laughs> okay. And it's not about how scary they are. It's about the imminent dread of the world is falling apart. The people you love aren't the people you love. Everything is going away. And then it also is like, hey, also uh, sex, sexism and racism. I'm going to make a point about that because that's just George Romero liked to do. Yeah. And that movie gets turned into this bullshit. And that's Zack Snyder's whole career. Watchmen. Complex story about is there really such thing as good and evil? Do good people do evil things for good reasons? Do evil people do evil things for good reasons? Like, and he turned it into like, no, he's, he's just the bad guy. The whole po- I'm not going to spoil it for anyone, I guess, but the whole point of the villain that we find out about at the end of Watchmen <laughs> okay. is that he's Hold not on. actually a oh. bad guy. <laughs> I think there's like a threshold of spoiling, and we've, 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 in terms of like time. Fine, but here's my. Time. If, if you haven't w- read Watchmen, which, you know, plenty of people haven't, I highly recommend you read it. Don't watch the movie, but the point is at the end of Watchmen, the moral of the story is more or less there is no good and evil in the simplest ways you could put it. Everyone is maybe good, maybe evil. Nothing is that simple. And, you know, sometimes evil things are done with good intentions. And can you say someone is evil for doing the right thing if that thing is, like, complexly, like, is it good? It's this whole, it's the whole point. And he turned the end of the movie and he said, no, that guy, the whole the character who's the yeah, entire point yeah. is he was like this, yeah, the, yeah, he yeah. thought he did the right thing and everything. Yeah. No, what if he was just a comic book villain? And it's like. No, no. The whole point is that he's the good guy, kind of. <laughs> Not that he's actually... And he's like, comes out on the screen. He's like, no, I did it because I'm evil. It's like, stop. <laughs> what, do, you, did you, do you understand any of what you do? And then, it, <laughs> then he goes and he goes to Superman. And he's like, oh, okay. So Superman's pretty much Jesus, right? And it's like... <laughs> If you want to do that, Zach. Superman's pretty much Jesus. Go right? ahead, Zach. You do that. The one good thing you can say about Zack Snyder is he gave Kevin Costner a paycheck, and God knows he deserved it. Kevin Costner. Poor guy. I can't put a face to that. Uh, Field of Dreams. Um, Waterworld. It's more ringing a bell. I don't know. I don't know people by name. He was in Bull Durham, I think. That's that's even further away from whatever you're talking about before. Kevin Costner was a guy who was popular in the 80s and 90s. Stopped getting any work for reasons I'm not really sure of. Was he? Maybe he was in Swing Vote. I think he was the main guy in Swing Vote. That garbage movie about like it turns out the one person gets to decide who the president gets to be, and it was him. I think. I think it was Kevin Costner. <laughs> oh my God. Which frankly should be our uh, electoral system is that Kevin Costner chooses the president. <laughs> Kevin Costner chooses the president. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah I was about to say check the time because it's probably uh, getting close to an hour we're about uh, to hit okay. yeah um, um, I mean you have I, I'm kind of running dry on our series chat yeah I don't have much else to add that movie stuff um, it's just movies movies were good when we were kids and now they suck I mean <laughs> yeah that's not true it's just all of the movies I, yeah lower exactly standards <laughs> All the movies that I like were good, and anything I don't like is objectively bad, and if you like it, you're a bad person, In my, is my opinion. But, I mean, you know, genuinely, I think there was a point in time where movies were good in a way that they won't ever be again. And I think a lot of it was the 70s, and then, you know, Jaws and Star Wars kind of shifted what people wanted out of a movie. And this, there was a vast potential... And in the advent of CGI and all this stuff that we have today, like, we could make art that has never been conceivable before. And people, you know, they do. They use the internet, they use computers and whatever to make art that was impossible before, but not at the kind of budget we could have. Look at, like, what people were moved by in the past. Look at, like, Renaissance paintings, what people, rich people would be like, hey, I want you to paint 
something really, really pretty and beautiful. Make this chapel look really nice. Shit like that. Yeah. And like today what we have is rich people saying, how do we get money out of the poor people? And that is, oh, what if we had them uh, put a bunch of these superhero guys in the, the one movie yeah. and, uh, you know, you have them like do that for a little while. And it only works if someone by coincidence gives a shit. Yeah. And even when it does, we're not using the potential that film can have as an art. And like a, look at a movie like Dog Day Afternoon I was just talking about the other day. It is this movie that like wouldn't exist in the way it did then today. Because every movie has got to fit into a mold. And it's either going to be like, well, if you have Dog Day Afternoon, it's got to be a thriller because it was a... It was, it was a bank heist, so you'd have those moments of like, like that, that has to happen a couple of times. Or, because it's got a heart to it, it's got to be kind of a comedy. So there's got to be a moment where like, you know, everything, there's no sound. And the guy makes like a funny, sarcastic remark. It's like, oh, he said that during a bank robbery? All that kind of stuff. Yeah. And every movie feels the same because every movie is like made by the same people with the same rules. And there's exceptions but the money is going to, and it always will, it seems, to the people who don't want to do anything different. And when you, the only exception is you'll see them get, get find somebody who does do want to make something different, uh, does want to make something different, like, you know, Ryan Johnson, Star Wars. Uh, you know, they're getting, like, people who are actually really talented and interesting small filmmakers, and they give them, like, a movie like Godzilla, and then they just tell them, like, hey, by the way, you can't do any of that stuff you want to do. But we want your name on this movie. And it's like, are we ever going to have movies really do everything a movie can do? I doubt it. I don't think we'll ever really have it. And so many people settled believing that they got it with Avatar. And at this point, they, they don't, they're never going to think about it again. Yeah. No, I don't. But yeah. Anyways, I'm excited for Avatar 2. <laughs> Is that a thing? Oh, yeah. It's a thing. I think that's a good way to end. <laughs> Okay. Goodbye, everybody.